All glory is to the assembled devotees. Who is reading? How is that? It is fixed in that way. It is working. Hmm. Hmm. Page number. God realization, there are three aspects. Brahmati, Paramatmati, Bhagavaniti, Sardati. The absolute truth is realized in three aspects. Brahman, Paramatman, and Bhagavan. Brahma, the impersonal conception of the Absolute Truth, that is called Brahman. And Paramatma is localized aspect of the Absolute Truth. And Bhagavan is the ultimate realization, uh, personality of God. Uh, the same example as I have given several times in these classes, that the light, sunlight, is realized first of all as sun sign. Then if you can go further, the sun planet, up to the sun planet, that is localized aspect. And if you enter into the sun planet, 
then you will find the Son, God is there. He is person. The same example <coughs> is in the case of absolute truth. The impersonal realization is not ultimate realization. Uh, ultimate realization is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is supported in Brahma Sangita. Yasa Prabha Prabhavatu Jagadanda Kota. By expansion of Lord's personal effulgence, the Brahma realization is there. So the original verse says that all of them as they surrender unto me, I reward accordingly. Every one follows my path in all respects. This means that everyone is searching after their absolute truth. Some of them are satisfied with impersonal features. The philosophers, Ganis, they, because they want to understand the absolute truth by dint of their uh, uh, imperfect knowledge, because we are in this conditioned state, our senses are imperfect. Therefore, whatever knowledge we gather, that is imperfect, that is not perfect. Uh, so, if I endeavor to understand what is absolute truth, my means of understanding are the senses, but the senses are imperfect. Therefore, whatever knowledge I gather by exertion of these senses, that is imperfect, that is not perfect. Ah. So, uh, the uh, persons who are trying to understand the Absolute Truth by exercising their imperfect knowledge, they reach up to the impersonal conception. And persons who are still farther advanced, just like yogis, they are trying to meditate upon the uh, localized aspect of the Absolute Truth, the Paramatma, the Super Soul. There's a little farther advance. But persons who have realized the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they are supposed to be the ultimate realizer. So God is realized by all of them, but not on the same level. The example, another example, just like from a very distant place, you see one hill, you will find just like it is a cloud. If you go farther, near, you will see it is something green. And if you reach the mountain, then you will see there are so many trees, so many animals, houses, and living beings. The same example can be given here. One who is observing the Absolute Truth from a very distant place, their conception is impersonal. One who is farther advanced, their conception is localized. God is situated in everyone's heart that is localized. Therefore Krishna says that my way is followed by everyone. The impersonalists, they are also aiming to the same goal. And the yogis uh, are the localized realizer. They are also aiming the same goal. But the devotees, they have reached the same goal. That is the difference. Uh, the impersonalists or the yogis, they could not reach the final goal. But the devotees, they have reached the final goal. Uh, therefore, you will find in the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says, Bahunam janmanam ante gyanaman maang prapadgat. After many, many births of transcendental realization, one surrenders unto me, accepting Vasudeva Sarvamiti, 
Vasudev Krishna is everything. Some Mahatma Sudullah. That sort of Mahatma great soul is very rare. Go on. Such impersonals do not agree <coughs> to accept the eternal blissful personality of Godhead. And consequently they cannot relish the bliss of transcendental personal service to the Lord, having distinguished their individuality. Some of them, who are not situated even in the impersonal existence, return to this material field to exhibit their dormant desires for activities. They are not admitted into the spiritual planets, but they again are given a chance to act on the material planets. For those who are fruitive workers, the Lord awards desired results of the prescribed things <coughs> as the yajnas are. And those who are yogis seeking mystic powers and are awarded such powers. In other words, everyone is dependent for success upon his mercy alone, and all kinds of spiritual processes are but different degrees of success on the same path. Unless, therefore, one comes to the highest perfection of Krishna consciousness, all attempts remain imperfect, as is stated in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Whether one is without desire, the condition of the devotees, or is desirous of all fruitive results, or is after liberation, one should with all efforts try to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead for complete perfection, culminating in Krishna consciousness. Yes, this verse refers to the statement of Srimad Bhagavatam, wherein it is stated that Akama Sarvakama va Moksha Kama Udaradhi Tibrena Bhakti Yogena Jajeta Paramam Purus. The idea is that there are three classes of men. One class of men, they are simply desiring uh, material comforts, desiring. Uh, they want a uh, nice house, a nice wife, nice uh, comfortable life, everything nice for the comfort of this body. They are called sarvakāma. Sarvakama means their desire has no end. Just like in the modern materialistic world, they are trying to improve uh, material comforts, but they do not know where does it end. Uh, one after another, one after another, one after another. Therefore they are called Sarvakama, unlimitedly desiring. There is no end of desire. Such persons, Akama, and akama means one who has no desire. Just like those who are devotees, Krishna conscious, they have no desire. They don't like any material comforts, any material improvements. They want simply Krishna. Akama sarvakama ma and moksha kama. Moksha kama means one who is disgusted with these material desires. And uh, aspires after something void, impersonal, or freedom from all these desires, moksha kama. So Bhagavad says that either you are a person desiring unlimitedly, or you have become freed from all desires, or you are desiring liberation from this material conditional life. You please try to become Krishna conscious. Your desires, whatever desires you may have, that will be fulfilled. That will be fulfilled. This is referred akama sarva kama. So whatever desires you may have, if you become Krishna conscious, Krishna conscious, then your that desire will be fulfilled. Wow. Well, men in this world desire success and fruitive activities, and therefore they worship the demigod. Quickly, of course, men get results from fruitive work in this world. 13. According to the three modes of material nature and the work ascribed to them, the corresponding four divisions of human society were created by me. And although I am the creator of this system, 
you should know that I am yet the non-doer, the unchanging. Mm. The Lord is the creator of everything. Everything is born of him. Everything is sustained by him. And everything after annihilation rests in him. He is therefore the creator of the four divisions of the soul. There are three conditions. Just like uh, I have got this body, you have got your body. So this body is developed, created. You know, in the mother's womb, the first body was just like a pea. When it is when it was first created, uh, these descriptions are there in the Srimad Bhagavatam. After sex life, uh, of the man and woman. There are two kinds of secretions. They mix up, emulsified, and they form into pea-like shape. In that pea-like shape, the living entity which is atomic takes shelter. And because the living entity takes shelter in that pea-like form, it develops, develops. Just like the, you see the child born he is, he is also developing, developing. So this is the nature. Ah, everything is born and it develops. It stays and it gives byproduct. Then it dwindles and then vanishes. These are the stages, different six stages. Ah. So after vanquishing, after annihilation, where does it stay? It stay in God. Uh, then again text part. The whole material ma- cosmic manifestation, bhutya bhutya puliyate. The creation is coming into existence. It stays for some time. It develops, gives some byproduct, then dwindles, then vanishes. And after vanishing, it stays in the same principle, the absolute truth. That is being explained. Go on. Beginning with the intelligent class of men, technically called the Brahmins, due to their being situated in the mode of goodness. Next is the administrative class, technically called the Kachakyas, due to their being situated in the mode of passions. The mercantile men, called the Voishyas, are situated in the mixed modes of passion and ignorance. And the Sudras, or the labor class, are situated in the ignorant mode of material nature. In spite of his creating the four divisions of human society, Lord Krishna does not belong to any of these divisions because he is not one of the conditioned souls, a section of whom form human society. Human society is the same as animal society, but to elevate men from the animal status, the above-mentioned divisions are created by the Lord for the systematic development of Krishna consciousness. The tendency of a particular man towards work is determined by the modes of material nature which he has acquired. Such symptoms of life according to different modes of material nature are described in the 18th chapter of this book. A person in Krishna consciousness, however, is above even the Brahmins, because a Brahmin by quality is supposed to know about Brahma, the supreme absolute truth. Most of them approach the impersonal Brahman manifestation of Lord Krishna, but only a man who transcends the limited knowledge of a Brahmin and reaches the knowledge of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna, becomes a person in Krishna consciousness, or in other words, a Vaishnava. Krishna consciousness includes knowledge of all different planet, plenary expansions of Krishna, namely Rama, Nishringa, Varaha, etc. As Krishna is transcendental to the system of the four divisions of human society, a person in Krishna consciousness is also transcendental to the mundane divisions of human society, whether we consider the divisions of community, nation, or species. Yes, Krishna has many incarnations. Sometimes he appears in the uh, species of fish. Kesha vadhita meena sarira jaya jagadisa hare. That does not mean that he belongs to the fish community. 
Similarly, when Krishna appeared as the son of Vasudev, Vasudev belonged to the Kshatriyas. That does not mean that he belonged to the Kshatriya community. Then again, he was transferred to Vrindavan to become the foster son of Nanda Maharaj. And Nanda Maharaj was a Vaishya, mercantile community man. So that does not mean that Krishna belongs to the Vaishya community. He does not belong to any community. Ah. See, so uh, you should not take Krishna that because he appeared. Uh, in India, therefore he is Indian or Indian God. That is a mistake. Krishna is for everyone. Uh, do not consider that Krishna belongs to the Hindu community or Krishna belongs to the India or anyway, Chatriya. No, he does not belong to any material designation. He is above. Uh, and you will find in the Bhagavad Gita, 14th chapter, he claims sarva jauni shu kaunteya sambhavanti murtaya There are 8,400,000 of forms of living entities, including human beings. And Krishna says, ahaga bija padapita, I am their seed-giving father. So he claims to be father, not only really of the human society, but for of the animal society, bee society, bird society, insect society, aquatic society, uh, plant society, tree society, all living entities. Uh, God cannot belong to any particular community or class. That is misconception. God must belong to everyone. So when we speak of Krishna consciousness, do not take it as a sectarian view. Try to understand the philosopher. He belongs to every living entity. He is the supreme living entity. Nitya nityanam chetana stetanana. That is the Vedic verse. He is the leader of all living entities. By our different result of our work, we have assumed different dresses. But as living entity, we are part and parcel of the Supreme Law. Uh, try to understand Krishna consciousness in that way. Go on. 14. There is no work that affects me, nor do I aspire for the fruits of action. One who understands this truth about me does not become entangled in the fruits of reactions of work. Because it does not belong to any community or any, uh, anything of this material world, he has nothing to do. Uh, we work. Why we work? Because he wants some material profit. He hasn't got to take any profit, so why should he work? He says, therefore, that there is no work that affects me. Uh, but still he comes. Uh, why? That is explained in the beginning. Jada jada hi saglani bhavati. When there is discrepancies in the matter of uh, religiosity, I come down to th make things uh, all right, uh, to set things in right order. That is his work. Go on. Fifteen. All the liberated souls in ancient times acted with this understanding and so attained liberation. Therefore, as did the ancients, you should perform your duty in this divine consciousness. Report. There are two classes of men. Some of them are full of polluted material things within their hearts, and some of them are material of free. Krishna consciousness is equally beneficial for both of these persons. Those who are full of dirty things can take to the line of Krishna consciousness for a gradual cleansing process, following the regulative principles of devotional service. Those who are already cleansed of the impurities may continue to act in the same Krishna consciousness so that others may follow their exemplary activities and thereby be benefited. <clears throat> Foolish persons or neophytes in Krishna consciousness often want to retire from activities without, being, without having knowledge of Krishna consciousness. Arjuna's desire to retire from activities on the battlefield was not approved by the Lord. 
One need only know how to act, to retire from activities and to sit aloof. Making a show of Krishna consciousness is less important than actually engaging in the field of activities for the sake of Krishna. Krishna consciousness does not mean laziness. Uh, we do not indulge, uh, just like Arjuna. This Bhagavad Gita was taught to Arjuna. He wanted to retire. Yeah, Krishna, why you are engaging me in this battlefield? Let me retire. Uh, the Krishna did not allow him to retire, to understand his position. That is required. Uh, retirement, how you can retire? Uh, you cannot retire. So long you have got this body, you have to work. If you do not work, you have to beg. If you do not beg, then you have to steal or you have to borrow. How you can retire? There is no question of retire. Retire means to retire from all foolish activities and engage yourself in real activities. Retire is the negative side, but unless you have got positive side, you cannot retire. You will have come back again. Uh, there are so many yogis and uh, jnanis. They say that this world is false. Uh, let me retire from it. But after some time, he again falls down, again to the sense gratification, this material world. So what is retirement? Uh, retirement is not required. But what is required that purify your activities, not to stop your activity, but to purify you. Just like when you are diseased, it is not required that you should be killed. No, your disease should be, uh, I mean, cured. Then you can work in healthy life. So that is required. Retirement means to become cured from the disease activities, but to uh, place yourself in healthy activities. That is Krishna consciousness. Go on. Arjuna is here at Bhārata to act in Krishna consciousness, following the footsteps of the Lord's previous disciples, such as the sun god Vivaswan, as mentioned here and before. The Supreme Lord knows all his past activities, as well as those of persons who acted in Krishna consciousness in the past. Therefore, he recommends the acts of the sun god, who learned this art from the Lord some millions of years before. All such students of Lord Krishna are mentioned here as past liberated persons engaged in the discharge of duties of Lord Krishna. 16. Even the intelligent are bewildered in determining what is action and what is inaction. Now I shall explain to you what action is, knowing which you shall be liberated from all sins. 17. The intricacies of action are very hard to understand. Therefore, one should know properly what action is, what forbidden action is, and what inaction is. Purport. <coughs> if one is serious about liberation from material bondage, one has to understand the distinctions between action, inaction, and unauthorized action. One has to apply oneself to such an analysis of action, reaction, perverted actions, because it is very difficult subject matter. To understand Krishna consciousness and action according to the modes, one has to learn one's relationship with the Supreme. One who has learned perfectly knows that every living entity is the eternal servant of the Lord, and consequently acts in Krishna consciousness. The entire Bhagavad Gita is directed towards this conclusion. Any other conclusions against this consciousness and its attendant reactions are becomes or prohibitive actions. To understand all this, one has to associate with authorities in Krishna consciousness and learn the secret from them. This is as good as learning from the Lord directly. The action, inaction, and perverted action. These three things are very important, subject matter for understanding. Oh. Yeah, the same example. It is very simple to understand. Uh, the same example. Your position, you first of all you must know what is your position. Uh, the position 
is Krishna says that all these living entities are my part and parcel. That is your position. Lord Chaitanya also says that Jive Sarupa Nitya Krishna Das. So as part and parcel, this is very easy to understand. Just like this finger is the part and parcel of your body. The hand is the part and parcel of your body. The leg is the part and parcel of your body. Uh, so we are all part and parcel of the Supreme. So what is our duty? What is the duty of this finger? Now I wish that you stand like this. This finger is standing like this. It is executing my order. Uh, if I say close, oh, finger immediately close. So this is the duty. If I am part and parcel of Krishna, then what is my duty? My duty is to act what Krishna says. That's all. That is my action. Without knowing this, whatever I do, that is perverted action. Ah, just like in disease condition, this finger cannot act according to my order. Oh, there is some pain. If I want to make it stand like that, oh, I feel pain. Because there is disease condition. Similarly, when we do not act in Krishna consciousness, that is our disease condition of life. That is not normal condition. In normal condition, we shall be all prepared to act in Krishna consciousness. That we should know. Then our action will be right. Otherwise, all inaction, not inaction, perverted action. Inaction is different. Inaction means what you do, there is no reaction. That is inaction. Yes, go on. One who sees inaction, inaction, and action in inaction is intelligent among men, and he is in the transcendental position, although engaged in all sorts of activities. Purport. A person acting in Krishna consciousness is naturally free from the resultant action of work. His activities are all performed for Krishna and therefore he does not enjoy or suffer any of the effects of work. Reaction means when you enjoy or suffer. That is called reaction. And inaction means when there is no result on your account. Oh, just like you are working on account of the state. The state orders you to fight, so you are fighting. You are killing so many men. There is no reaction. But without state's order, if you kill one man, you immediately becomes a murderer. There is reaction, immediately. This is very simple to understand. Similarly, if you act on the supreme order, there is no reaction. And if you act on your own account, there will be reaction. Own account means whatever you do, either you suffer or you enjoy. But if you want to be inactive, neither suffering nor enjoying, in the neutral state, uh, that is required. That is Krishna calls. Gone. Krishna says, Krishna says, Krishna means without reaction to work. The impersonalist ceases fruitive activities out of fear so that the resultant action may not be a stumbling block on the path of self-realization, whereas the personalist knows rightly his position as the eternal servitor of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore he engages himself in the activities of Krishna consciousness. Because everything is done for Krishna, he enjoys only transcendental happiness in the discharge of his service. Those who are engaged in this process are without desire for personal sense gratification. The sense of eternal servitorship to Krishna is not immune to all the reactionary elements of work. That's all. Now, any question?
Yes. Can you can you explain for once again what action inaction is and inaction inaction is? Action, just like you are active, you are working. You all Krishna conscious devotees, you are also working. You are not sitting idly. Uh, but it is inaction. Inaction in this sense that it is not producing any reaction. It has no reaction. But others, those who are not acting in Krishna consciousness, they are also busy. Uh, but they are producing their reaction. Uh, so things which are not producing reaction, that is inaction. One who can see that the, I am acting in this way, there is no reaction, that is inaction. And one who sees that I am doing this, but there is reaction, that is action. So it requires little intelligence to see how it is action or inaction. Therefore it is said that one who can see action in inaction and inaction in action, he is intelligent. Yes. Any other question? From the audience? Yes, you try to understand, try to understand the science of God philosophically, intelligently, uh, logically. There is no question of dogma. Everything is nicely explained in Bhagavad Gita as it is. So you can try to understand. Yes. This is Krishna's picture. Yes. I practice transcendental meditation myself, and some of the concepts you use uh, as far as levels of consciousness are you use the word cosmic consciousness and God consciousness. And I was wondering how uh, Krishna consciousness would relate to this and what do you understand by cosmic consciousness? Uh, living transcendental consciousness simultaneously. Just to explain, uh, just try to explain what do you mean by cosmic consciousness? What is the distinction between transcendental stage and this stage? The transcendental is pure being, pure existence, pure consciousness, pure awareness, and the other states are pure, are irrelevant. And what is impure? Um, not impure, they... Um, then how we distinguish pure? What is that object of perception that is pure? The object of the, per, the perceiver and the, per, and the object perceived would be one. What is that object? Give me a tangible example. In, in relative existence it would be that which exists. And what is that relative? 
relative means there must be something absolute. When you speak of relative, just like you are son, relative, in a, immediately the conception of father must be there. Otherwise, why? how it is relative? So, as soon as you say relative, what is the absolute? That you have no conception of the absolute. You cannot explain. It's you are simply your meditation means you are simply in the relative. It's, a, it's not it's not it, you are giving definition in the just like you do not know what it is. You say simply it is not this. That's all. But you do not know what it is. That is not concrete definition. If I say, this is not watch, this is not book, this is not light, this is not microphone, I can go on thousands of years saying, this is not, this is not, this is not. But that does not mean it is this. And if you know it, immediately you say it is glass, spectacle. That means you do not know it. Simply negation, this is not, this is not, this is not, is not the realization of the Absolute. You must give concrete idea of the Absolute. That is transcendental meditation. Eh? No, oh, you are working, you are not realized. <coughs> but we are giving concrete, absolute truth, that is Krishna. That is explained in the Bhagavad Gita. How is concrete absolute? It is just like this. You are studying this article. You are simply trying to understand it. It is not this, it is not this, it is not this. But if you take, take it from an authorized person who knows what it is, that this is spectacle, your knowledge is immediately there. So here the Absolute is speaking about the Absolute. So if you understand Him, Krishna, then immediately understand Absolute. Yes? No. These people are not talking. They are realized. Talking is the beginning. But there is realization. Just like uh, with, when I did not come to your country, I was talking. The America is like this. But now when I've come to America, I realize what is America. So talking is theoretical understanding. And when you realize, that is practical understanding. One is called jnana, other is called vijnana. So jnana and vijnana, both things are there, theoretical and practical. And so how do you learn to realize Krishna? You have to adopt the process. This is Krishna consciousness. You have to adopt the process. Adho sadhya, if you are inquisitive to understand, that is your first stage of uh, faith, that is called sadhya. Adho sadhya, in the beginning, 
your inquisitiveness that I want to understand, that is faith. Then next stage is association of persons who know sadhu sangha, then initiation, then uh, disappearance of all, of all misgivings, then uh, steady faith, then attachment, and then uh, ecstasy, then realization. These are, these are stages. So if you are anxious to know, then please come to our classes. We are discussing simply this subject matter. So you will kindly, if you kindly come, gradually you will be able to understand. It is not very difficult. Uh, all my students, they are all American boys and girls. I have not brought with me any Indian or Hindu, but they are understanding. Just talk, talk with them. They will be able to explain how they are understanding. So similarly, you will be also able to understand. It is not a very difficult subject. But you must be sincere to understand. That is the only qualification required. That's all. Yes. By a certain spiritual name or what do you do? Yeah. By study, what is the realization? Study. Yes. Study, simple study will not help you. You must study from a bona fide teacher. Otherwise it will be misleading. Just like if you want to be a medical practitioner, if you purchase books from the bookstore, medical books, and you study, that will not help you. You have to admit yourself in a medical college and study there, then you will understand. If you say that I have studied all the medical books, the government will not recognize you as a medical practitioner. When he will see, and the government will see, or any person will see that you have regularly passed medical examination from authorities, then he will be accepted. 